I told you people before that um, Islamic, uh, you know, states of West African province, they call them Iswa, they were recruiting people in Bono State. They said they want to separate from Nigeria. And ever since then, these people, everything they have been doing, every step they have been taking, it has shown that these people have expressed readiness to carry out everything they want to do. These people are not playing. When you look at everything going on at this moment in northern Nigeria and the intelligence that are coming forth from these areas, you will understand that these people are very, very ready to what they say. So when they say they are going to secede out of Nigeria, these people meant what they say. And everything we were seeing when these people were trying to remove Jonathan is what we are seeing now. Insecurity ravaged the northern state. Now, someone sent me this, um, this video that happened the uh, day before yesterday. We had these people seized the Nigerian military vehicles. Take a look. They are rejoicing because they captured Nigeria military right there. They are capturing most of the motors for them to carry out what they want to do. In one place, we know that. Why the Nigerian government sent all the military to the south east? Look at the numbers, the numbers, these people are terrorists. Look at their numbers. Look at what is going on. And see when we come out and tell you that this country is one, that this country is sustainable, that this country is governable. <laughs> This, this is what you call your country, right? Yeah, they seized the Nigeria armored car. And what next? They are going to add it into their armored car and ammunition. You see the weapons these people are carrying, right? Sophisticated weapons. You see the weapons they are carrying, new snipers. These people are ready. You know what happened yesterday on Zamfara State Highway? These people are stopping buses. They will stop a bus. They will adopt people into the bus. They will adopt people into their own bus, kidnapping people, parking people, going to Bono State, recruit people. <coughs> Sorry. And they said they are going to divide this country by the year ending. They said this. I am not trying to, I am not trying to make it up. Maybe this is not what they said. You can go and um, you know, verify what I'm saying. They said this, and it was um, it was published by Shara Reporters, it was published by Vanguard by a Chinese television and so on and so forth. This is when this Iswa terror group holds public meeting, mark the word, mark the statement, a public meeting with Bono residents to recruit new members, stresses plan to have a separate Islamic country before the year ends. That is a very big problem, a very, very big problem. Now, in this video, I'm, I'm trying to establish a concept. I don't want Nigerians to be angry when they hear people saying this country need to be divided. I don't want Nigeria to see it as a bad thing when you hear it, when people say this country must be divided because there is a justification to it. There is a justification to referendum. There is a justification to division, the solution of this amalgamated entity. There is a justification or there are justifications to it. Because when you come to look at things sincerely, even you yourself knows that this country can go on like this. These people, these same people are collecting taxes. 
these same people i'm telling you they are collecting taxes from people taxes that the federal government are not collecting so how many government do we have in nigeria how many government these people are doing everything you know have a constituting nuisance from around the country and nobody i mean nobody nobody is questioning nobody is even talking about everything that is going on from around the country yesterday i was showing you what was going on in Benue state it is the same people, people like this, that are constituting this nuisance. They go to villages, they render to those villages, you know, they sack people there, they do everything they can do. I am asking this question, are we still a country? If we are still a country, why do we allow such a thing, something like this to go on? Why should we allow something like this to go on? So I am trying to establish this fact that people should not be angry when you hear when people are telling you that this country is due for separation, this country is due for dissolution. Don't tell me that politicians don't know about this. The politicians are aware of everything that is going on. But the question you should be asking yourself is that, what is the motive why the politicians don't want to respond to all these insecurity challenges going on? Why? That is the question you're supposed to be asking. They know what is going on. They know why they are keeping quiet. Like Tinubu said, if he fights insecurity, he will be eliminated. How can a president say such a thing for you to know that there is a power that be, there is an agenda, and the agenda is they really mean what they are doing. But unfortunately, so many Nigerians will come out to blindly argue. They will blindly argue about everything. If you are doing something, you have a purpose. If you see like IPOB agitation, they have a purpose, they want their own country. As these people, why are they agitating? They say they want Islamic states. In other words, they want their own country. And this thing has been going on time with that number, and people think that, oh, this thing is just going to go like this. <laughs> anyway, before I will open line for people to call in, I want us to listen to Dr. Onise Agbakoba, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Onise Agbakoba talks about why Nigeria should be won. He says some people are confusing themselves by thinking or presuming that Nigeria wants to be won. Do you think every Nigeria wants to remain in this entity, in this suffering, this kidnapping, this poverty, inflation and everything? You think people want to remain, you know, in this uh, contraption? Anyway, before we open my life, for course, let us listen to what uh, Dr. Ondise Agbakoba is saying. The first question is, just like I have a wife, do I want to be married? Question number one. So in Nigeria, do we want to be one? It's an assumption that we want to be. It's a, it's a terribly big and wrong assumption. Because when I went to Croatia, Croatia was part of the six countries that formed Yugoslavia. Right now they're doing very well. Macedonia is doing very well. Slovenia is doing very well. Slovakia is doing very well. So nothing says that we must be one country. Nothing. It's not, it's not sacrosanct that we must be one country. If in being one country, you have all the killings you have in Jaws, in Abuja, everywhere. What's the point being one country? This man has a message that every Nigerian is supposed to listen to. In case you don't know him, his name is Onisa Bakoba. He's a very good friend to Bondamet Tinumbu. And this man is speaking the truth about the condition and situation of Nigeria. If you really want to understand this message well, you have to remove tribalism, remove religion and sentiments from your heart. And you will get the deep message that this man has been passing right from the time. Governance is about a foundation, a country that has been struggling with a foundation for 23 years cannot be a serious country and there, there has to be a need for some speed. So the 10th Assembly must immediately address this problem of continuous talking about Nigeria. Remember what Oleg said about the survival of Nigeria and it rings because I was there that day, it still, it still rings in my head that in a situation of a political arrangement such as Nigeria's, the first question is, just like I have a wife, do I want to be married? Question number one. So in Nigeria, do we want to be one? It's an assumption that we want to be. It's a, it's a terribly big and wrong assumption. Because when I went to Croatia, Croatia was part of the six countries that formed Yugoslavia. Right now they're doing very well. Macedonia is doing very well. Slovenia is doing very well. Slovakia is doing very well. So nothing says that we must be one country. Nothing. It's not, it's not sacrosanct that we must be one country. If in being one country, you have all the killings you have. In Jaws, in Abuja, everywhere. What's the point being one country? So that's why in looking at President Tinubu's 
governance program, I would remind him of a structural engineer who says, I can't build this house, I can't build Nigeria on the basis of a weak governance structure. It is the most important and fundamental process if you want a country to grow. So Nigeria's governance structure is very weak. The first is, any nation not at peace, and I always like to use the analogy of marriage. If, for instance, every day you get up and you, you and your wife are fighting, you cannot have peace, and you cannot think about how to develop. So the first thing we have to do in Nigeria is we have to organize peace. Because if we don't organize peace and security, you can't have good governance. So that is the step number one. And I also made the point at the lecture that to continue to do the same thing with the same result is a mistake. We cannot resolve our problem by military solution. It will not happen. Quote me. If we continue on this path to uh, deploy the military, deploy resources, and I don't even know how much has been spent by the military in uh, acquiring armaments, we can't win. And the simple reason is you don't use military sol solutions for what is called irregular warfare. Where do you find these Boko Haram people or the bandits? So military option will not give Nigeria peace. Rather, what you need is to go back and say, before 1914, who were the owners of Nigeria? When you invite those who were owners of Nigeria, Bini Kingdom, Bini Kingdom in the Guinness Book of Records has the largest man-made structure in the world. The world they built bigger than the Chinese uh, wall. People don't know this. So that is an extremely old empire. And the man who sits on that throne, the Oba, controls a humongous amount of political power. Then you count the MS, you count my own OB, yet you exclude them from the process of development is a huge error. It's a huge error. So this is what we need to do. We need to bring in all these guys. We need to bring in Ohaneze, Pandev, Arewa, um, Afenifere. These are the people that will shape Nigeria and give us political peace for development. So that's the first point on governance, on political governance. Then the second point on governance concerns the issue of uh, what is the proper constitution that we need to have? Because all the constitutions we've had have been imposed, right from the uh, colonial to the military to the one that uh, General Absalom imposed, and then the one the National Assembly is now conducting, you know, and it has taken them 23 years. I think that's a very long time for us to have a constitution that no one even believes and respects. So I looked up, I did some research, and I, and I, I found Professor, late Professor Mwebeze's um, um, theory on a new constitution very interesting. He says that the National Assembly may not be, and I repeated it to President Babio, may not be aware of the nature of their powers. So I pointed out that the National Assembly has three legislative powers. The first is the National Assembly sitting as the House of Assembly of the federal government. The second is the National Assembly sitting as the House of Assembly of the FCT. Then the third is the National Assembly sitting as the House, uh, as the House of Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is a power they've never used. So Mwabeze suggests that they could use that to just establish a new constitution. All they need to do is to consult people. The constitution people don't understand is not as sacrosanct as it sounds because it's, a, it's an act that attaches the, the schedule. So what does it suggest? Just delete the schedule, that's the current constitution, and add the new one. So all these discussions that have been taking place, create, write up something that is agreeable, send it around Nigeria, and once it's accepted, you go to the National Assembly, invoke the powers of Section 4, Subsection 1, and then exchange. This happened when the Republican Constitution was established. The Parliament removed, by deletion, the independence constitution, and they put the uh, Republican constitution in exactly one day. Our National Assembly has spent 23, 23, uh, 23 years. Because if you don't have the foundation, you can't go anywhere. So we don't have security. Our political foundation is weak. Our constitutional foundation is weak. Two 
vital instruments for development. The judiciary, is, as in my 45 years, never been as low as this. Even the Supreme Court, John Okoro, castigated the appeal court for a terrible judgment where they removed virtually everybody in the uh, plateau uh, political system. So we can't grow if we have a weak judiciary. And therefore, the only way to go is to break up this mafia in the Supreme Court. Have to break it up. It's like saying, you know what? All no woman in Nigeria shall be entitled to political office. That's what they've done to us in the judiciary. No lawyer is entitled. It's only them. They create a mafia, block us out, and appoint themselves. Incestuous relationship. So they can't be their best. So I recommended to the National Assembly to, to understand the difference between administration of justice. That's why judges take note and write. Versus judicial administration. In respect of judicial administration, the National Assembly can intervene. All right. That was um, Dr. Lisa Bakoba. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. Now, you know why I'm trying to play these videos for you? Is because I want to establish the fact that the people who you think that they are your leaders knows the problem of Nigeria. They know that this entity won't work. It won't work in this structure and it can never work like this. These people are aware of this fact, but they decided to impoverish the people. They decided to suffer the military, to suffer the police. They are putting repentant Boko Haram members in the police. Right from the time of Buhari, I have been warning about this. I said these people, they have an agenda why they are putting Boko Haram members into the military. And as I speak to you, they are killing the police who are in, inside the intelligence response squad. So what is going on in the country? Now, Israel said that uh, they are going to, you know, they are going to, um, you know, they are going to divide this country by the year ending. Then everyone remains mute as if they don't hear what is going on. And these people last three months, we hear about 100,000 of them came from the Republic and entered into Nigeria. Right now, you can see them with sophisticated weapons. You can see them with all sort of, you know, assorted rifles. You can see how they are jubilating, knocking so many rows and so on and so forth. Something is going wrong. This video I played for you before. This is not an old video. This is what happened recently. Take a watch again. I am here to cry. I am here to. I am here to come back to the so as I said before, these people are not policemen, they are not so that they are the case of terrorists I was talking about. They told the people that they are coming to the fight in Nigeria before the standard. Look at them. They just see Nigerian military vehicles before they get here. This is happening in a country that people want to remain at war. I don't think so. They overpowered the the overpowered the soldiers. You can see their sorted rifle, they are carrying. They are going to sell it my bag. If not because of social media, if not because of social media, tell me which radio station or TV station have the courage to broadcast such thing in Nigeria? Tell me, if not because of social media, things like this has been going on in Nigeria before, but the issue there is that people are not reporting it. People are not reporting it. Now,